Doug, I was wondering if you could take a similar approach sure. to Nalan. Yeah, sure. Um, and, and Neil mentioned absorption issues. So, you know, the first um, issue with um, treatment with nilotinib in my mind as second line therapy is um, it's a twice a day drug. Uh, you're going to need someone who understands that it's twice a day, is going to be committed to taking it twice a day. And it's um, different from any of the other drugs that it's, it's recommended. It's specifically um, suggested it needs to be taken on an empty stomach. So it's a couple hours before, a couple hours after, no food. So you need somebody who is disciplined enough um, to be able to manage that. The, what people need to understand is if you take it with food, the absorption is greater. And so the risk of the side effect profile is enhanced if you take it with food. So you really do want people to be consistently taking it on an empty stomach. Um, there's a black box warning with the drug um, with uh, regarding uh, cardiac dysrhythmias and uh, prolonged QTC. So it's recommended there's a series of EKGs that are sort of uh, strongly recommended if you're initiating someone on therapy. And so uh, that needs to come into play. Someone who may be at increased risk for cardiac uh, dysrhythmias, uh, maybe someone who you may be less likely to, to put on this drug. I also remind my uh, referring physicians that you know, the dosing is a little bit different than you would use in the upfront setting. So if you're losing it in a second line, it's 400 milligrams twice a day versus the uh, front line um, recommended dose um, for nilotinib is 300 twice a day. So um, there are some subtleties um, with the second line use of it and some um, specialization we need to think about for patients. All of that taken together, um, early on when we only had three choices um, for TKIs, there was a sense in the CML treating community was that it was really well tolerated if the patient was compliant with the twice a day dosing empty stomach and, and didn't have heart risk factors. Um, the last um, characteristic of patients that I would hesitate to put on it is somebody with um, borderline um, sugar control, um, a type 2 diabetic, um, often get loss of their, their diabetes it is control uh, with this drug. So uh, those are some caveats I think that are important to recognize. Do you monitor a lipase in your patients on nilotinib? You know, um, that's a great question. Pancreatitis, both cl subclinical and clinical pancreatitis are associated with um, many of the TKIs, um, nil nilotinib being one of them. You know, I, I, I haven't been. I've been mostly treating them symptomatically. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes in with some GI problems uh, or some upset stomach that's consistent with inflamed pancreas, um, I will certainly check that. I'll certainly stop the drug and, and I'll monitor them moving forward. Yeah, I think we see a lot of um, biochemical elevation of the lipase that may, that in the majority of the time in our patients on a lot of that is not clinically significant. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't exactly. Check. So, Doug, um, pardon me. So, Doug, but, um, did you mention cardiovascular risk factors and whether you think that you should, that should be a uh, uh, um, of particular concern? Yeah, so the, the longer term, uh, I, I think, is, um, I guess, short and long term. You know, we, we've kn we know that some of the TKIs are more associated with vascular events, uh, cardiovascular events. Um, we've talked about panatinib briefly. Nilotinib is probably the second highest rate of, of those complications. And again, like Elias suggests, you know, hey, we really need to manage these people medically and try to do everything we can to minimize their risk, their cardiovascular risk when, when they're on these agents. If genetic testing suggests that nilotinib is really a right drug for a, a certain patient, I think it's uh, part of our obligation to help them medically manage weight loss, exercise, good diet, um, and try to get their blood pressure under control, watch their um, cholesterol, et cetera, to try to minimize their long-term risk. Again, using your internal medicine toolkit. Yeah, still, still have Absolutely. to dig back into that. Um,